Yo, not real shit. Like dream low key is to go on like the Price Is Right. <laughs> like that's like my fucking dream. Real I shit. Love it. Shout outs to one of my friend who has an aunt who wins at every show that she goes to for Price Is Right. Ellen. She goes often all the time. We are, we have our insider. <laughs> what? She know who she is. She listening. How does she get that? That's crazy. We know an insider. Who, when I say down to the stove, came from the Ellen show. Let's just say things like that. Like, that's how bomb it is. And she goes like, in She's an audience member all the time, every time. Doesn't matter. That is what life in retirement is about. <laughs> I think that the Messy Monday uh, crew should be able to go on the Ellen show one day. I'm just putting that shit out there. Like, can we hey, be in Ellen, the audience? Hey, please? girl. I love going to audience shows. everybody and good morning it's messy mondays episode 16 hey everybody how's everybody doing hey guys it's a monday on a tuesday Tuesday. but you know what it's like everybody gets a slow start sometimes you know what i'm saying and especially today after that long thanksgiving weekend most of us had off on friday you know we did like it was hard to just bounce back and act like you want to get back into this it's not working i'm gonna be real with you like, it was like a struggle this morning. And act like you were. Actually, I felt the most refresh that I've had you in a long time. Because I actually had like That's a true. And I, I actually was extremely productive at work today. So was I. And let's not jinx the rest right. of the week. I want to make that happen. And I wish you all the same as well. I think that people should work. Because the holiday season is here and it I is busy. I think people busy. should work. And I mean, I'm just throwing this out here. I think people should work 12 hour days and less days a week. Um, I think that it's easier to pound shit out in one day mm-hmm. and like get get it done. And you know how you're in the groove. And especially when you have a project, like you, if you just keep working on that project, like it gets taken care of versus coming back tomorrow. So it's like, I feel like people should just work longer days and less days of the week. And I think we'll be a more productive society. That might sound almost similar to like how tech startups or like tech companies kind of function now. They build like you, where you go to work, it's like you're at home. They have chefs, they have food to order. Everything is there. You have bedding and you just spend more time at work there, but you have an X amount of vacation days. You just get the project done and then you go about your business and go on to the next project later, like when you come back. So that might be a good idea right. nurses do yeah, that nurses too do have long long shifts uh firefighters they have long shifts i'm not necessarily saying i want to sit here and do the graveyard shift i'm not trying to do that but i'm one of those people that <laughs> if you give me an eight to seven eight to six thirty i work eight to six thirty even when you're not trying to you know what i'm saying so why not work eight to six thirty yeah and take a day off the week come on four days eight to six thirty doesn't sound so bad and have longer yeah. weekends not bad. Just a suggestion, America. Not bad. <laughs> Before we get the show started and talk about our long, amazing weekend, um, we did hear back from our messy question person from last week. Shout out to our messy question person from last week. <laughs> <laughs> we enjoyed answering yeah, her questions. She had a ton of questions asking about, yes, the group chat therapy. So she had a ton of questions regarding like, why do men want you when you're already happy? Or like, why does your ex always want to come crawling back? That type of foolishness. So she did just let us know that the guy hasn't seen her since she's been happy. She's only just told him that she's happy. Okay. So not even being in person. This is just via text, right. him knowing that she's happy. He, so imagine him actually like seeing her. Seeing it. Yeah, like that glow. Yeah, yeah. You know, your whole aura is just like out there, your whole vibe. So don't go near him because he'll fuck up your vibe. (laughs) I mean, why is she still communicating with this guy? I feel like I'm not getting the whole story. A 
I'll dive deeper into that one later. I have a feeling the there's a chat. There's well, maybe a, we'll do group chat therapy too. We need like a part two. I have a feeling there's like a sequel to this one. <laughs> we'll have a part two coming soon. So more messy questions to come. <laughs> and if you have a messy question, don't forget to email us or send it our way. Absolutely. And make sure to follow us at Messy Mondays Podcast on Instagram. We really do try to stay as open and as communicative on that platform. So if you haven't started following us yet, please do on our Instagram. Yes, yes. And I wanted to talk about kind of like my favorite time of the year right now that we're in. It's Cyber Monday today. (laughs) So the internet was going crazy. Right, right. And I was trying to be very cognitive of the fact that I do not have the money to spend on all these amazing deals. Right. All these flashy numbers in front of me. So did you buy anything yet from Actually, Cyber Monday? to be honest with you, I'm such a addict on online shopping that I, on purpose, <laughs> did not go online today. Because I, what I did, I took advantage of the Amazon thing. You know, Amazon had the Black Friday specials for like a week prior to mm-hmm. um, Cyber Monday because Amazon is just like the shit. You know what I'm saying? So I fucks with them all times. <laughs> So, like, I already did a whole bunch of shopping online, and I, I'm an online shopper for sure. So, like, I knew not to go – like, I went – I kind of dibbled and dabbled a little <laughs> online, but I didn't <laughs> I didn't pull the trigger. Like, I'm just in – I'm in a budget right now that I have to try to stick to as, as much as I can. I feel you. It's like this came really quickly around, like, the years going by so fast, and I was not ready to have spending money already. Do you mean? <laughs> Need anything? That's what it really comes down to. Like anything I buy on Cyber Monday it could be a strong want. To be very honest, but I kind of do need. <laughs> well, then that's different. You, know, if you need the new electronics. Rock. New electronics no, are need- a big deal for things like this. You know, like home appliances, big deal for days like this. Mm-hmm. I totally get those things. Like it's a good, it's good to hold out and then make the sacrifice and get the bargain. But at the moment, me, myself, I, I I don't need those things, you know? So is Black Friday kind of obsolete also? I think Black Friday has lost its thunder like crazy. And I thought it was the only one because I was like, why are people still standing in line for TVs? Don't you all now got the same ass TV? Everyone right. has like a, some sort of like flat, like minimal TV. Everything comes HD. Everything Yo, comes HD. like 140. <laughs> like real <laughs> shit you can get yourself a nice little hd like 32 inch for like 140 dollars real shit yeah, that's all i got unless somebody's <laughs> gonna treat me to something better because <laughs> it, it is what it is that shit plays what you plug into it because that's what basically tvs are they're just huge monitors now so it's like and i i barely even watch the actual tv anymore i watch everything off of my laptop i like the big screen though mar i'm, I'm a fan of the big screen i like to watch things on the big screen Maybe because my TV screen and my computer screen are about the same size. So <laughs> I really don't have. That may have a lot to do with it. That might just For be sure. just comfortable being in bed. But right. I do think Black Friday has kind of oversold itself throughout the years. And I it's think as the economy has modern changed. Society. Yeah. But as the economy, like everyone has an iPhone or a touch phone almost. Like, you ever hear when someone says, damn, they're still stealing phones out there? Like, it's not something that is a rarity anymore. Certain things, certain electronics. Right, right. I get that. But it's like this. It's like the the wave right now is doing shit with a lot, very little effort. That's where Uber Eats is from. That's where all these apps where you can get people to come to your house and do your hair and your nails. That's where these apps where you can find handymen to come to your house to fix things. Like, that's the society that we live in right now. Everything has to be simple. So it's not simple to stand in the line at 12 o'clock at night until 3 in the morning and, like, fight people and get trampled at Walmart. Like, that's, like, I look at it like, why am I going to struggle this hard to (laughs) save 300 bucks when I can probably just do a really aggressive search online and still save $300? Very true. And just pay a couple dollars for shipping. You know what I'm saying? Right. Or like even do a price match and go to Best Buy and say, hey, I found this on this website and Best Buy said that they would match. You know, like, guys, like make an effort. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like it's not impossible. Walmart price matches, you know, like whatever. I just don't see the point of 
going through so much physical trouble <laughs> to get some shit that you can really get online. Very and deliver to your front door by the mailman. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? That just adds to it. Like why get up and why go? I get it. Right. And when you said you can get a handyman, like order one, Amazon, I don't know if Amazon allows you guys to do this, but Amazon lets you even get a housemaid, like someone, like a, like no a cleaning way. lady to come in and clean your house. You get a handyman to come in and clean your house. I live in Amazon country. So, excuse me. Praise to the Amazon culture right now because I am all about it. Yes, that's amazing. We live, I, so, we get to try. Like in Seattle, they do a lot of like testers and things like that for us out here. So we have those options of doing a lot of those things. So, but if you, have, and then you have the two hour window <laughs> delivery of groceries. Do you have that? Yeah, I've seen, I get that in Miami too. They said that they give us a $20 coupon plus they get the two yeah. hour delivery on groceries. Prime now. Yeah, I got that. So we get yeah. the little, we have a little uh, extra, there's a truck that drives throughout the street. It's called a treasure truck. And if you have Amazon Prime, okay, it'll be like a special deal on a certain thing, but you got to go find the truck out in the street and the truck opens and then you get it for that special deal. Like we get a lot of little perks out here in Amazon country. <laughs> Damn, that's so awesome. That's you so awesome. Try it. But yeah, the Black Friday to me has kind of died out. Cyber Monday has really good deals. But then I just, I, to me, it just wraps around my head like that deal will come back later. Do I really need that? Am I really need to save $20? Can I buy it later? You know, taxes still got to be paid. Or is this just, so. is this still impulse buying? You know, is this just like a reaction because everybody else is buying? You feel like you should buy yeah. something. That happens too. It's like the, just everybody's just doing what's in, you know? Definitely. Definitely. But it, it's cool, and I think it's a tradition as well, and it also prepares people for... I mean, I don't do the, the toy shopping thing, but I'm assuming it must be good for, like, layaway plans for parents that want to buy toys for their kids or, like, those really expensive game consoles nowadays. Like, I totally understand how that may be a smarter way um, for working-class families, so I kind of get that, too. Um, it kind of... I think this kicks off Christmas shopping. Like, it's like, boom, Christmas shopping time is full effect right now. Like, that's what everybody's on. Everybody's trying to get, like, a good little gift at a reasonable price for, like, your loved ones and tchotchke yeah. gifts, you know? <laughs> Which is the worst part. Because it's like, you have to get one for the person in the <laughs> office. You got to get one for the person that you see every morning at the coffee shop. And you got to make sure, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you got to show, like, a little candy cane, a little love, Definitely. you know? My only yeah. problem with how Black Friday runs now is that it's not true to Black Friday anymore. So stores are open on Thursday on Thanksgiving, and that irritates me. Yeah. We're doing too much. We are. We're trying to... It was fun in the beginning, right? Like you kind of just run to Black Friday. Like you you got up at, you were with your friends eating dinner and you guys stayed up all night and you're laughing, you're having a good time. You look at the clock, you're still up. It's like 3 a.m. And you're like, fuck it, we can go to the mall, right? Because the mall opens at five, like that kind of fun stuff. Now it's like, well, I'm waiting for my mom to finish cooking. I'm, a, you know, I'm just walking around all day. I'm just going to go to the mall at three in the afternoon as opposed to, you know, on a Thursday as opposed to Friday. So I think it just, the shift around that is that we're such big, big consumers now that we're missing out on the family part of things and so focused on just getting to the deal. It's too capitalistic. Yeah. Too capitalistic. You're right. Like, it's like, Jesus, let them have dinner. Yeah. The employees, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, employees aren't eating. They have families. Yeah. And you know the people that are working are not people who have good jobs. It's people who, that's their job and they have no choice. No offense to anyone that works at, like, Target or Walmart. I'm not offend. I'm, like, not trying to sell your position. But obviously, this isn't a glamorous position. Mm -hmm. You feel me? It's a job that's very hard because it's retail and you have to physically do a lot and deal with customers, which is not easy. So these are not pleasant days for them to go to work no you know what i'm saying like this is a nightmare this is long on your feet annoyed mm -hmm. stressed out putting shit back people returning shit all i remember those days so i feel for you guys i've been in those positions before 
Right. I think it's it's definitely too much. I think the employees should have Christmas, should have Christmas, and they should have Thanksgiving. Yeah, they definitely should be deserving of that. So shout out to those companies that actually do that, that they don't open on Thanksgiving, that you actually right. do have to wait yeah. for Friday, 6 a.m., 5 a.m., in order to even really get a part of the Black Friday sale or special or whatever they have going on. So there's a lot of companies like that. I can't recall them at the moment, but Guys, it's dope. And there's nothing more American than Thanksgiving and the 4th of July. Like, this is as American as this shit gets. Like, this is our holiday <laughs> yes. here, you feel me? Like, other cultures try to be like, yo, we want to do a Thanksgiving day too, you feel me? Because it's like, this is so dope. Like, you guys get together, the family, you have dinner. It's like such a big holiday in this country. People take the day off. It's like nothing is ever closed in this country. This is one of those days that shit is closed. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's a, I get it. And there's so much history to it. I mean, the actual history of it, we all feel a little uncomfortable about it. You know what I'm saying? Because we understand that it's not the pretty picture that they painted to us with the corn and the Indians with the feathers and like, you know, the pilgrims. Like, no, that's not really what happened. There was a lot of, you know... In invading of a culture and, you know, spreading a disease and, and exposing people to something that they weren't even at fault to be exposed to. A lot of that happened around that time. But we all know that the Mayflower was the ship and that everybody <laughs> sailed in it and they came to the good old land of US of A. You know what I'm saying? They came to Plymouth and everybody knows about Plymouth Rock. Mm-hmm. That's like our history, guys. That's like what we do. And you know, assortment of people, religions, and people just came seeking a new location, and they found Native people, and they decided to celebrate that moment of them uniting every year on the same day of the year, and eventually it became traditionally Thanksgiving. And um, that's what it, it the origination of it, but now it's become the, the one day that you actually see your relatives is the one day that you usually spend with people you really actually care about versus like mm-hmm. random people. That's why Friendsgiving has been invented because your friends are like your family too. So it's like you want to have a special day to celebrate them. So Thanksgiving is pretty I, dope. I like how it's... I like it. You're right. As you, as we get older as a country and as people and things like that, we have shifted that meaning of Thanksgiving or how we celebrate Thanksgiving because... Exactly. I've always grown with knowing Thanksgiving. I'm just spending it with my family. We're thankful for having our family. That kind of aspect, you know, we're blessing the food together. You're just seeing people you haven't seen all year long or maybe years for years who finally made it around and you're getting to spend time together um, and just having a good time. So under knowing the history, the back end of it is important, Right. But knowing that we're not celebrating those factors, mm-hmm. we're celebrating the fact that we're actually with our family members and that we're just happy to have music and, you know, cracking jokes and dancing and, you know, having that true celebration and good ass food. Good ass food. <laughs> right. Good ass it doesn't food. have to be That's the traditional show. food either. It could be your family's traditional food. It can be your culture's traditional food. But just take mm-hmm. the, that exact day and do something together with people. I think that's what I like the most. Yeah. For sure. And it's like, um, it's, a, it's a day that kind of makes you mm-hmm. say thank you. And sometimes we need a reminder that we should be thankful. Because this, this day is to give thanks. And that's why I think that I like it the most. Because you kind of... I think everybody needs to take a, a, a moment and a break in the day of the year at least once to say, yeah. you know what? Thank you. Thank you that I'm here to see another year. Thank you that I've made it this far. Thank you that I'm healthy enough to even be aware that I'm living this moment because your life could be yeah. something. But we should do different. that more often too. It just is. That's just the reality. Yeah. True. We got to start. True. I think I do it, but not. I'm not saying I, I do it, you know, as often as maybe a super positive person that does like motivational (laughs) speaking may do it. You know what I'm saying? But I think overall, I try to be aware of my blessings and, and, and be grateful for them. Yeah. We do have to do a little bit more often. Don't just wait till November. Like I'm trying to think of like, what did I do in back in May or July? Right. Like to see people. 
Like, what did I do, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, march to see people like those kind of things or tell someone thank you or tell someone, you know, how much you appreciate yeah. them and all those kind of things. So that's pretty important. Um, this year, my Thanksgiving was at a Chinese buffet. <laughs> What? No family. No One way. of my homegirls here, we call each other orphans. Uh, no offense to orphans, but we just don't have family out here. We didn't have like a Friendsgiving. So me and her, our family's in the East Coast. So me and her were like, screw it. We are not going to stay inside the house. We are going to go out and eat. And the Chinese buffet was the spot. And it was the hot spot because that shit was packed. A lot of people chose not to cook. So it was well worth it it was very good and we had a good time so i i spent it as a friend's giving i guess you can say but you guys weren't gonna like mooch off of like somebody else's dinner no way no everyone lived everyone actually happened to just kind of go kind of far to see their families no one stayed like within the area of seattle so we couldn't really go house to house bouncing and getting pumpkin pie like i wanted to but (laughs) i got dim sum and snow crab legs and <laughs> made my own pho. Um, lobster tail, steak. So that was my Thanksgiving. Damn, you went in. I'm kind of jealous. That was what the buffet was. And it had a turkey. Damn. You know, they had everything. It was a really good um, location. That's awesome. It sounds like you had a unique Thanksgiving. Yes, a one of a kind. <laughs> right. And um, one of the reasons why we wanted to make sure to discuss the Thanksgiving um, episode and the episode of tonight's topic, which is immigration, we wanted to wait until after the holiday because we didn't want to necessarily bring a negative spin into it because we were both very excited, you know, for the positive energy that you feel around the holiday. But we all know that when you think of Thanksgiving, do you think of that, you know, part of our history of, you know, the transitioning of new cultures being exposed to one another and, you know, people moving from one location to another, people migrating here. And that's such a hot topic in our culture right now because everyone says like immigrant, like it's a bad word or like a bad thing or like it's a negative connotation to any time you ever hear the word immigrant. And I don't know why we act in brand new. Like, like this is something that we have not done since the beginning of time mm-hmm. here. Like, it's like, why is it that now everybody is so appalled by the process that we have been doing since the very beginning of this country? Like, I, I, it, it blows my mind because I recall as a kid, you know, people talking about becoming citizens, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So it's like, and the family before them and the people before that. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, there's even situations that America has even said, my bad for what they've even done to Native Americans here. And they even, you know, kind of have a little process where they compensating them somehow. And I I mean, I'm going to let Marley talk on that because she definitely knows a lot more than I do when it comes to that subject. Yeah. But that's called dividends. So there is a process in where, and I don't recall the agreement or kind of what the amendment, the law is of how it was decided upon or when it was decided upon to do something like that. But yeah, America did I do reparations or whatever the best term would be, but it's right. called dividends is what the received dollars are to Native Americans for their hurt and, you know, what their ancestors and what their people went through. And currently even going through now with the Dakota pipeline, if you guys don't know about that, I'd research it. It's about oil. And recently oil has spilled within the area and in, in, within sacred areas um, within the Dakota area. So, and people have been fighting for that not to be built. And still our government has decided to implement the Dakota pipeline um, and as an example, knowing that we knew that it was going to harm, harm people and harm the land, it did burst and, you know, that's caused some issues out there. So do some more research on that. Um, but there is a process in where as Americans, as our government, you know, knew or knows what they've done in their history and what the past is looking like and a way of making up for it, I'm assuming, is by paying back 
And there's a long process of exactly how that money comes from and what it is and those kind of things. But there's a reason for it. And knowing that reason is what's important. Knowing that those people were hurt, their ancestors were hurt, their history was hurt, that the government or the people who came from England or wherever were the ones who destroyed the land that we do have. But is that still applied now? Are we looking at it the flipped way now where we're thinking immigrants or any immigration is going to harm us in some sense now? Is that the way that it's kind of flipped in turn? But I mean, that's interesting for us to discuss because you just said that there's a process of dividends, right? So mm-hmm. if you don't mind me asking, they get like a, an allowance? In a sense, it's, 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 it is your dues. It is yours. It is what you are received. So it is, it's like receiving a paycheck every other week, every month or whatever. And so can that be, are what, is, what is the range? You don't have to be specific. Well, what's the range of more or less how much they can get? I don't know specifically any of the range, but I'm assuming it can go anywhere from $100 to maybe a couple thousand or something like that every couple of months, every month, okay. every couple of months. Okay. Well, I mean, so you can basically live off of it if it's on no. the high thousand. If it's on, it, it's, and it's all depending about who you are, how far your ancestry goes. There's a lot of layers to it. So you probably yeah. heard people say, you know, get tested and all this other stuff. And what's your blood? Like, there's a lot of layers to it. So I think some of that applies to it as well. But none of it is something you can live off of. A lot of people who do receive still even dividends have jobs and regular li- lively jobs and things like that. And no one okay, wants to live off of that either. So just imagine, is that something you always want to live off of, that history? That's what you're living True. off of forever so what's taught is that it's not something you always uh are living off of you have to provide for yourself but that can be saved for future for retirement you know save that for something of a better use in that sense so that's kind of what's taught in the better line got it but the casinos in end also are providers of revenue (laughs) So, so it's okay. So they don't pay taxes on that land where the casinos are. Casinos, is that no. what it is? Mm-hmm. Okay, so they keep their profit. Yeah, and so remember, they're in a sovereignty, so they are their own government as well. They're they're a sovereign state. Mind so, blown. Yeah, so they it, it, it just it's like mind blown. Like it's not that I'm not aware that these things are happening; it's that I am aware that these things are happening, and you're just like, this is actually happening. Yeah. It's an interesting, it's very interesting, actually. It's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. I had a great time working like you, there. You live new amongst things. these things. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You just live amongst these things. And it's like, it's so different than what people think America is, honestly. It really is. In what way? The fact that we're like letting them, basically, because I'm not trying to be disrespectful to anyone that's Native American, but we, we all know how this country is, like. If the country doesn't want it, they are not going to allow it, period. So it's like the fact that the country is allowing this and like they're letting it happen, I feel like it speaks volumes. It really does. Yeah. <coughs> and I'm, I'm sure, sure, I'm pretty sure it was a long fought road to actually get to it. I'm, I'm positive. I'm sure it, it was a big fight, a big push. And I don't think it applies to every single. And here's the other catch. I've worked for one group. This may not apply for all groups. Make sense? Because not every group right, of right, Native right. American um, tribes have a full tribe, right? They can be just maybe 10 people. It can be 30 people. It can be thousands. So it, it, you have to remember that there's only so limits. So there's some that are actually, there's some tribes that are extremely poor, um, who don't get taken right. care of, who don't get seen or do not get... Um, What's it called? Um, I guess certified or something of that sense. I can't think of the word right now by the government. They're not recognized at all, too. So there's all these other group of people who don't get that same respect, in essence, because they're not a tribe, per se, because there may not be a full group. So there's a lot that goes into it. But I mean, it's like a class system within them as well. Yeah. Oh, yes. In a sense. You know what I'm saying? So I get Mm -hmm. it. 
there's like a more prestigious, I guess, you know, than another type. I get yeah, it. But I think they all help each yeah, other. I, I mean, it, there's always layers to everything. It's every culture. There's layers to every culture. Yeah. Like no one is, no one is, uh, no free of that. Like everyone is guilty of that somehow. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. In every culture, in all existence, in life. <laughs> Just the way we're set up. We we believe in like ranking. That's like the way we've been kind of molded. Definitely. You know? Um, but yeah. Um, but with that being said, I think it's really <coughs> interesting how back to our point that immigration really is what this country is. This is what America has always been, right? So it's like it might change like the flavor that's coming in the door, but there's always somebody coming in the door, you know, like from a lot of different backgrounds. And it's like, I can only speak to the cultures I know because that's what I've been exposed to. But like when you live on the East coast or where you live in South Florida, especially you're very, very intertwined with the Caribbean culture. Like this is like where Caribbean people come to, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, a easy segue to transition into American society to move to South Florida. Because we have the little hubs. It just is. Like, it kind of just, like, yeah. And it's like everybody just kind of adapts to that in a way. Very true. We have those little hubs that, like, someone asked me today. Here's the funny thing. Someone said, or not today, this weekend. They said, when you live in Florida, what are the closest countries or islands that you guys go to? And so I named all these islands that we could possibly go to from Florida, even like St. Martin, Aruba, like all those even tiny islands that we can do. And then I was like, you know, what's crazy to me is that here mm-hmm. on the West Coast, you can say I'm going to, you know, Hawaii. <laughs> like, and, you're, and, and I just look at people like, who just right. says the word I'm going to Hawaii? Because it's an easy trip from here for us. In like Florida, it's, it's a 12 hour trip and we have exactly. to stay in, right. you know, in LA for the night and then get back up and then fly to Hawaii. Like there's not a straight shot. Yeah. Like it's like super dramatic and yes. also known to be very pricey. So it's like, are yes. you going to Hawaii? No. Okay. okay. For the past like, year, like, I've almost you know, been like here. Every time someone yeah. has said to me, I'm going on my vacation to Hawaii. I looked at them like they were crazy. And when I looked at the price of the ticket, it's like two hundred dollars. A ticket is nothing but two hundred dollars. I'd be like, "Oh damn, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can go to Hawaii too." <laughs> like, is that? But simple. that's what that's basically that's a perfect example of like where people migrate to. Like, it's like everybody always thinks that the biggest population of minority population is the only one they know where around where they live, but it's like there's a whole nother type of person that lives in another region. Like, mm-hmm. there's so many Filipinos, for example, in the West Coast. Huge population. I can't say the same in numbers would be the same in the East Coast. I doubt mm-hmm. it. You know what I'm saying? It's just because it's closer that to that side, you know? Like, it's just, you have to think about things geographically. Like, it just makes sense. That's why there's so many Caribbean people in South Florida. And none here. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's too here. far. Well, just to give a, a definition between immigration and migration. So immigration is the action to come and to live permanently in a foreign country, right? So that's doing the whole process also with paperwork and the borders and all that stuff and being official. And then you're going to become a permanent resident by doing citizenship in those kind of aspects. Migration, on the other hand is um, the movement of people to an area or country in order to find work or better living. So those people, okay. it can even we can even be migrators, right? right. So you, you're a migrator. I am a migrator. <laughs> I am. And any Caribbean person here is a migrator in the Seattle area. Right. So <laughs> I've migrated from the same country or from one country to another or state to state in order to a better living, a better additional. So there's right. those two aspects because some people can become immigration, do immigration for better living, but it's on a permanent stance and they're completely picking up and moving. So 
migration's not always permanent sometimes as well. So just uh, differentiate from that, from those two. I thought it was interesting. Right. And it's also a good point because it really is about assimilation. Like (coughs) people come here and they can either embody the culture here Mm -hmm. or they can try to modify, you know, how they do things and adjust how to fit that into living here. You know what I'm saying? Because you know how there's people that when they move here, it's like they move to an area that's exactly the same as where they came from. How can I explain that? Like, it's like... Moving to Washington Like, if you move... When you move from New York. Not even. Or or even to, like, Providence or, like, you know what I'm saying? Or to, like, (laughs) Lawrence or... It just is like, you know, I'm not saying that you're not going to get Americanized, but your process is going to be a little different than a person that's living in a place that's yeah. not like that. Yeah. You're less likely to absorb the American notion and the American culture as much as, much. as you are if as you were much. to be on your own or somewhere and things like that. Yeah. So you're you're going to what's familiar as opposed to learning what the new is that you've immigrated to. I get what you're saying. Right. For sure. And it's like, for for example, like, all right, I've always, you know, lived amongst Hispanics, but there's always been the Hispanics that were from my culture. So that's what I knew. Now that I live here in Little Havana and I'm around uh, the Cuban population as, you know, such a large amount, this is a heavily Cuban area, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's new for me. And it's like, when you, when you get to know how they function, it's actually pretty dope because it's like, it's another Caribbean culture. So you automatically connect on that level. And it's like, you you know, we kind of have a different kind of sense of humor. We kind of have like this, this kind of like cool vibe. You know how Caribbean people are. We just like that. So it's like, you know, it's, you kind of click a little quicker. So it's, it's not like it's uncomfortable, but it's, it's just something so fascinating because it's like what I've learned from them is that they have like a system in place for whenever someone comes here from Cuba and in that system, they help get them room and board. They have them set up with clothing already. They have them ready to kind of start a easy job because they already have that lined up for them. And they kind of prep them to start learning how to speak English. And I swear to you, like in two years, they're fluent in English and they're making good money at a job. And it's like they're they're functioning at a really high rate. And I'm able to say that because I'm from an immigrant background and I haven't seen this level of progress so quickly amongst a group of people who migrate here because this is something that they actually have a very strong support system. And I think that's actually pretty dope. I don't know if any other culture does this as well. I personally think it reminds me a little bit about the Jewish culture. And the reason I know about the Jewish culture is because I'm from New York. And if you're from the Bronx and you went to school in Riverdale, you definitely know Jewish people. So it's like, it reminds me of that culture. And what I say by that is they kind of set each other up. They kind of Mm -hmm. teach each other the way. They teach each other the formula. Like, this is what Mm -hmm. is going to work, and let's do it this way. And it's like, I'm just so impressed. I'm so impressed. Like, I'm like, wow, this is awesome. Like, I wish I could get my people on this. Like, this is dope. Like, let's let's become powerful. This is why they run Miami. Real talk. Like, it's because, you know, they're so... They're so proficient in making sure that they try their best to help one another to kind of, you know, progress that it, yeah. it, it, it works. I think that's awesome. It works. And I, I think, yeah, you're right. If everyone applies that for all cultures and setting up each other for success and yeah. backing each other up and giving each other the tools and those kind of things, I do see that there will be everyone can strive for greatness altogether. Right. And then it kind of creates like a like a brotherhood that maybe yeah. you pay it forward. You know what I'm saying? That it's like, okay, when 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 I need it, if someone did it for me, now let me do it for someone who needs it as well. You feel sure. me? So it's like usually it when someone performs a good deed for you, well. you're more open and willing to perform a good deed for someone else. So it'll keep that that linear kind of happening across the board. So that's a it's a great concept and a great thought. 
actually. And I didn't know Cubans do those kind of things for other Cubans, I guess. I think well, so. they, you know, it's a little bit harder to get over here, too, and on in the Cuban culture. <laughs> uh, so, right. yeah, it's well, a little bit tougher, I mean, but I think right, that's probably right. why they'll probably support each other in that right. sense, but it makes sense. I think that because they were given that opportunity, they buckled down and said, let's do this the right way. Yeah. Is that inappropriate for me to say? I hope it's not. I don't mean that offensively. I feel like they just maximize on their opportunity. I think I, think where you're, I think I know what you're saying, but I think setting someone else up because you've got, okay, so you know the hard way of doing things or how, to, how hard it was for you, let's say, how to do something. You would rather set someone else up for quicker success or quicker progress than right. going through the same struggle you did because why not share what tools or what you've learned with someone else? Unless you're right. a terrible, horrible person. It, it, it just cuts back on a lot of mistakes mm-hmm. for people. You know what I'm saying? And it's such a culture shock to go from the level of uh, of exposure that they were coming from to come to such a modern society from one day to another. I can understand that that might take a little coaching in certain aspects of, of you know, day-to-day things that are different here. And this is how this is here. And I understand that that might take time. And why why not be conscious of that and, and help a person from your own culture to yeah. understand that? It's a great thought. I love learning about different cultures, so I like that you've learned that. And I'm over here 3,000 miles yeah. away, as I like to remind everyone, <laughs> and learning a lot about various cultures. There's a lot of different right. cultures. And I, and I love that. I, that's what I appreciate about communicating that moment where you're like, oh, I'm learning something I would have never known unless I had this conversation. And I'm teaching you. people a lot about all culture. Like I said, I'm making poquito, I'm making pateles. So. <laughs> <laughs> Marley's going to come up in here and open up Yo. like a chimney truck stands for those of y'all you there in Seattle. <laughs> going to be selling you frituras at three in the morning <laughs> i was so upset when i ordered i went to the dominican the one place that says it's dominican here i went back to it recently the dominican flag was down like they took it down i was very hurt okay it was super <laughs> that sad. very sad <laughs> um i asked for presidente they don't have i was like okay Then I asked him for like a sandwich and it read like a chimney. But boy, when I ate bit into that thing, I called my dad and I was so mad. It was like <laughs> the worst, like a French bread, not like a water bread. Oh my it was God. horrible. Yeah, see, right? That sounds terrible. Right. Yes. A sounds French hard, bread? Actually. What we need to do is that we need to start a campaign to send you a fresh chibi, like from somebody that makes the best chibis in the United States. Okay. <laughs> I mean, pa- they can just ship you know it to what? you. A Dominican package would be very, I very much appreciate it. I have there you go, listeners. That's what, that's what, that's all that Marley needs for Christmas. Dominican package. <laughs> I really, truly do. <laughs> Salami. I love it. What a bow. Salami. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have. The only thing here that I have that my mom sent me is oregano, but a, like Dominican oregano. And it is a, the yeah, like yeah. the all essence of life that makes a huge difference in your food. So send me up a care package, people. I'll send you the P.O. box so that you can treat me for Christmas. Please, please. Can someone please give this girl some Dominican love? Please <laughs> send it to her. Speaking of love. <laughs> it was. Broken in the news today that Prince Harry is no longer single. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> he is officially engaged. And this is the cuter prince for all you English people, British people out there. I'm sorry. Prince Harry is before He's Prince He's the Harry. fun prince, actually. He's the fun prince. He's, He's the, the one. The I one. <laughs> He's the breaking all the rules one. He's officially engaged to Meghan Merkel, who is an actress. In the show Suits, I've never watched Suits before. I know that there's a show called Suits. I heard it's an excellent show, though. Yeah, but I've never watched show. it. Um, so they are officially engaged to be married. And for those who don't know, Megan is American. All right? 
She is half white, half black. So she is out there for us in the culture. All right. She is out there for us. Um, And they've been dating for a while. I just want to talk about how amazing her friends are in comparison to the friends that we have. (laughs) Why? (laughs) They were set up on a blind date. She's so She's pretty freaking cute. She is. I like them together. She is previously divorced, which for us in in America, we're in American world, does not matter, right? Like we can care less how many times we expect people to be multiply times divorced in America. No, I'm kidding. Come on, don't say that. But we're more accepting, (laughs) right? Like it's kind of a thing where you're just understanding. Unless you're very religious in the Catholic church and all these other aspects, you may fall for a different, but in America, we're more used to the, the term a divorcee. But, but these, these royals <laughs> don't do that. And so she got yeah. in there, divorcee, half white, half black, American, TV show actress. All right? <laughs> Not Grace Kelly. She is a, just a regular actress. Um, and she bagged a prince. But all shout outs to her friends. That's all I'm going to say. A blind date set up from her friends. What do your friends do for you? Damn, but who is the homie that knows the prince, though? Like, that is good for you, Megan. Like, how did you get the homie that knows the prince? Good come up And on how the don't you know that your Real homie shit. knows the prince? I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> what friends are you holding back from me? Like, that is my thing. That's dope, though. What a plug. The Oof. plug. Forever. <laughs> Your friend will always be yeah. the plug. Yo, if that bitch don't get an invite to the wedding, I'm done with ya. I'm done with ya. <laughs> I just, I'm happy for them. They both look extremely happy. The ring is nice and cute. She's super cute. They look cute together. She's an American in there. She's taking one for the team. She is not... Not that she can ever be princess. <laughs> Let's see. Well, not not she's princess. I'm sorry, That's, but she's still like she's still a royal person, and she's a princess. You know, she's not gonna rule, but you know, she's a princess. It's, you know how many people gotta die in order for it's a, for Harry to even get close. <laughs> the babe, like legit, it has to yeah. be his dad, then his brother, and his brother's kids before Harry can get anything. So. You'll forever be prince. Yo, dude, but who wouldn't love to be a princess? I think Come just the on. thought of that is pretty. That's the yeah. dopest feeling it's ever. Imagine that, like you're gonna be wearing like a crown, <laughs> bitch, because you're supposed to. Like it's like that's awesome. I'm sorry, every girl would like that. Every you know, this girl, is actually who you are one of those royal every weddings girl. that I will actually tune in to watch. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for. I hope, I hope they do like a docu. No, they're no not doing. Like, <laughs> I'm keeping up really with the Kardashians or Robin <laughs> China docu series. I mean, no, that's why I said I said docu because like he's royal. You feel me? Like I wasn't like let's do a reality show. You know, like a docu. That's how you make it. I just love it. Show. I'm happy and excited for them. I don't usually care about this stuff, like royalty, and we're not. You know, yeah, I have yeah, friends yeah. who are British, but you know, they can care less, but I just think it's like the American factor. Like you can just be on every day. Yeah. I feel like that's like a little bit of a blow to the gut, which I love a little. You can be in every (laughs) single and still find your Prince Charming. But again, it's all about who, you know, shout outs to the friends. Yo, yo, that's real life, man. Shout out to your friends, B and treat your friends good. That be having good relationships. (laughs) Like, Treat your friends good. They son. will hook you up with the That's right one. life. Because look, what you get with the prince, girl, you're going to be balling. <laughs> like she's balling. Like she's good. She's going to live a, fa- a fantastic good. life. She's with the prince that doesn't have the pressure to act like a royal. So like they can just spend that money he has. Like, oh God, yes, you two are going to have a good time. This is awesome. And they already look like they have a good time together. Mm-hmm. They look like they just celebrate, relax. I like it. Time, I so. like it when in the pictures you can tell that the relationship is real, genuine. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like you could tell. Like I'm not saying that, you know, that these people don't have the control as to what they're showing us. I'm not saying that. Clearly, we all know that that's possible. But it's like 
when they do catch him in the candid shots, it seems you can tell the genuine. Right. I like that. And I feel like that right. their couple has that vibe. Because they do have those setup ones. You can tell that she's already been slightly in the training because the way like she was showing off the ring, like when she holds onto his hand. If you watch like the little quick interview, the quick snippets, and you just look at how she starts placing her hand and how she moves and like how she does things, she's already like in that princess mode training. <laughs> Like, if you ever watch Princess Diaries of how you have to do things, like, you can see. That, that's how yes. we know our facts. Only <laughs> <laughs> my Princess Diaries. <laughs> sure, that's the only place I learned where Geneva was in Switzerland. I have a, I actually have a coworker now who is from Geneva. And all I was like, girl, never thought it was real. Just thought that was from Princess Diaries. I appreciate that. <laughs> I told her straight to her face. <laughs> Welcome to America. I told her straight to her face. So that's the kind of cultures I'm meeting out here, if you're wondering. So, <laughs> but oh. shout outs to them and congratulations. Don't really care about royal weddings and stuff, but I might actually tune in and watch this one. I'm a tune in. <laughs> I'm a tune in. And I you know, and my coworker today was telling me about on black Twitter how they had mad yes. jokes. And um, how everybody was like, you know, you know, I'm related to her. I'm going to that wedding. Da 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 da. Like, you know, I'm like in a full sure. plate of like Jamaican food, oxtail and curry goat. I was like, we don't even know she's Jamaican. Y'all already <laughs> running with it. Oh. <laughs> oh man. I love it. It's gonna it be is. a funny it couple so of shout months. Shout out to them. Congratulations. Honestly. I, and remember, always ask yourself, what are your friends doing for you? <laughs> I feel pressure from Marley's friendship circle. If you guys don't step it up, like, like, Marley is going to cut you yes. off. Like, I am getting the because vibe. what are you right doing now? for me if it's not a prince? <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Here's what we should do, guys. Let's do something different. Let's try something new. <laughs> Hook your friend up with somebody. Try that. Let's see what happens. Don't even tell your friend who it is. Be like, yo, meet me at this place at seven and set her up and do that shit to your homegirl. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> Message sent from Messy Mondays. Your little homegirl that went to that buffet with you, little orphan. Her job is to get you a date and your job is to get her a date. And I have spoken. That's your yes. homie now because you two went through that together, okay? <laughs> so we have a Chinese buffet for Thanksgiving. We need to hook each other up with something. With somebody. Yes. Yes, you do. So that's the that's what we're doing right now. Everybody hook your homegirl up. That's yes. what we're doing because Anyone you can, can find, find a prince, prince too. An African prince. <laughs> a sweet right anywhere. So well. <laughs> you never know. You never know. <laughs> well, send us your questions to messy Mondays pod at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter. I need to get back on Twitter, get her back on my love and hip hop New York. I haven't been watching the season, haven't been watching Black Ink Crew, but I'm going to get back on it and catch up with you guys. I heard it's a little crazy. Girl, we got to talk about the trash, girl. <laughs> I'm gonna keep you up to date. I'm gonna catch up on Black Ink Crew for sure. Um, I'm just waiting for Love and Hip Hop Miami to show. I think that's really all we care about. January is just around the corner. <laughs> so, that I will be completely up to date for. And if you're looking for me, you can follow me at L U V Marley underscore on Instagram at any time and then our twitter is messy mondays pod yes and make sure to follow me at s-h-o-m-i underscore e-n-t that's s-h-o-m-i underscore e-n-t that's show me on instagram make sure to follow and stay tuned and follow us on our ig of course for messy mondays podcast we're always posting questions we love you guys interaction we love the feedback we love when you guys just double tap that screen and give us that like it's like so amazing every time we get a notification that someone else has liked it our post so we appreciate the support you guys have given us 
We know that you guys are paying attention. We know that you guys are following. We see the support and we see the growth. And we always want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. But the more you repost this, the more you tag people on our posts, the more you share, the better we will be. So with your help, we are going to become stronger. We're going to become more popular. And we're going to go in the direction that we deserve to be. So we want to say thank you so much. Always tune in to Messy Monday's podcast where we tell your mess the best. And don't forget to submit your stories because at the end of the day, we still want to talk about mess. And we always yes. going to tell it the best. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good night.